Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. As I said at the top of the show, I'm very excited about this particular artist coming on. He does extraordinary work. I had not seen it before, and so we're going to enjoy it for the first time together. Let's say uh, good evening to Marcus Jansen. Uh, nice to have you with us, Marcus. Thanks for having me, Gary. Thanks for having me. But let's just talk about you a little bit. Um, you, you are a veteran. Um, we're proud of that. And we, we thank you, of course, for your service. Um, just talk to me a little bit about where you grew up and how you became an artist, what inspires your art. Let's let's start there. Yeah, I, you know, my roots are in the Bronx. Uh, my grandparents migrated to the Bronx from Jamaica in 1954. Subsequently, my, my mother was raised there and I was born while we were living on Boynton Avenue, Boynton Story Avenue in the Bronx in South View. So my roots are there, but uh, my, my life really took... Um, a completely uh, different direction. Uh, I started school in Queens, where I had my first uh, exhibition, actually at the Lever House in Manhattan a long time ago, uh, and then went overseas to Germany, uh, where I went to school and actually graduated from there uh, while coming back on summer vacation. So I had, a, you know, my, my uh, background is extremely complex, and um, that's also, in the end, what led me to the art, uh, and the military um, was a big part of that, because it was uh, around that time also when I was diagnosed after my uh, deployment to the Gulf War. Uh, that I was diagnosed with PTSD, and that's sort of what led me to uh, becoming, uh, or actually well, getting more involved in the arts. And and um, you, you talk about the PTSD, artwork and you creating is therapeutic. I mean, it's almost like medicine, right? And I'm, I'm guessing, but especially when, and we're, we're going to look at it in a second, uh, this this work in particular helps you express, helps you define, helps you feel better. Oh, absolutely. I mean, for me, it was a lifesaver, I would even say. I mean, a lot of vets are now sort of getting involved, um, you know, in art therapy programs and so forth. Back then, you know, my war was 30 years ago. I was in the Gulf War and um, I came back with PTSD and I was uh, involved in Gulf therapy programs. And these programs uh, were actually designed for, for vets to do exactly that, which is, you know, to express. Um, I just happened to have a talent in art. I went to art school before that. And so for me, it was um, it was just right on the money, right? So I was able to uh, really find my artistic um, talent there again, and uh, even saw it as a possibility to really do as a profession later on, which is then what I did. Let, let's put uh, pictures up and we can continue to talk while we look at them. Our, our producer, Rebecca, has some uh, some samples. Uh, I mean, this, you know, you talk about what you have been through uh, in the Gulf War and the other things. You want you want to just talk about this? It It just has... I, I, I wish I could find the words. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's the beauty of artwork. It well, it's good sense. if you can't, because, I mean, that's the whole thing about, uh, you know, I always say great art should um, be familiar, but out of touch, right? It's something that you're, you you kind of feel familiar with, but something that you can't really explain in words. And that's um, that, that's precisely what I try to do with the work. That particular work you just showed is Behind Walls 3. Uh, it actually appeared in the New York Times um, last year. So um, it was a, a series of uh, works that I did uh, behind walls, and it really kind of comments on this sort of generation that we're in with these dividing walls that keep on popping up, whether it's psychological or physical, right? Or whether it's, the, you know, and, and it can really be anywhere, whether it's the border here in the United States or whether it's, you know, the East German wall separating East Germany and West Germany, or whether it's the wall right now that we're trying to keep people or get people safe from sure. in Afghanistan. Because, uh, um, it's, let, it's let's show the, the next one. and. Um, I want to ask you, I'm always interested in an artist's muse and in what an artist is thinking about. Um, do you, uh, like, look at this. Do you plan it out or do you kind of look at it and then say, well, I'll put this here, I'll put this there? <laughs> no, there's no planning at all. There are no preconceived notions with my work. Um, um, they, really, um, they really happen and occur out of the process itself. Hmm. And um, do, do you want to talk about that one um, just for a moment? Yeah, this was also a series. This is a series I did actually in, in while at my studio in the Bronx. I have two studios, as I said before, Gary. One is in uh, Florida and one is in, in the Bronx. And, and much of that is also because I do different production in different places, right? I mean, the different influences depending on where you are and, and, uh, and the things that inspire you. And um, um, a lot of it is, I think, the things that I'm doing in the Bronx is also uh, around gentrification, changing of the South Bronx right now also, which has, of course, always been sort of a revolving revolving door, but that's been a subject of mine and how that happens and how people are often displaced during those. Uh, right. during those Let, let's, uh, let's put up another picture while um, we keep talking. But one of the, the real values of this 
are, are the many emotions that come through are the many pictures. Uh, this this is uh, tragic and applicable, unfortunately, as recent as <laughs> as today. You, you want to talk about it a little bit? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, that one is uh, power and people, right? And this uh, sort of you know, topic of power and how power is uh, often abused and and um, you, you know, a topic that we deal with in, in almost all of our society these days, right? Whether, whether it's psychological or actual power being acted out on people. Uh, and that was a series that I did uh, last year, also during COVID. Uh, by the way. Uh, and and you've been uh, celebrated and recognized and shown in in many um, uh, high profile places. Um, congratulations! Here's a technical question, <laughs> and I'm sorry to ask it. Let's put up another one. Um, but and, and while I ask it, how do you know when you're done? In other words, you're so free form. Oh, I never know when I'm done. <laughs> at some point, you look at it. You probably look at that one and say, you know, I probably could add uh, something else. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, an artist is done when he says he's done or she says he's done. Right. So, um, you know, it, it um, there is no finish to a painting, except that if, if there's any finish or any completion to a painting, it's when the viewer looks at it. I mean, that's how that's mm -hmm. been always my position. The, that last one that we saw, um, you have a, a series of them of people, uh, you know, uh, illustrated in artwork without faces. Um, yeah. There are many ways to interpret that. Um, do you have a thought that you want to share about why that is? Um, what your vision of these people is that you've decided to make them, you know, with, without a, fa a face? Yeah, uh, initially I was exploring uh, power, anonymity, and secrecy. And um, by doing so, I started doing these faceless paintings. It was almost uh, 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. And they sort of emerged into these faceless characters of, of power figures. Uh, and, um, you know, the one that you just showed, of course, uh, could be reminiscence of some founding father of some sort or something, right. but or, or some colonialism of some sort. But these are individuals that we really are not too familiar with. And these and these yet they control lives and they control life and they make big decisions. I, I got to tell you, the way we introduce this segment, uh, let's put up another one because I want to make sure to get them all up there. Um, here, here's another uh, a sample of it. The way we, we introduce this segment as being an outgrowth of your experiences, um, you know, with the military, uh, coming home with PTSD, you could see why these are therapeutic, why creating these images would be helpful to you and say, this is, this is the frustration, this is the inner anger, frankly, that I feel. Yeah, uh, frustration, anger, or, you know, simply being critical about, you know, the world that we're living in today. Uh, you know, I think that's, I think that's uh, fundamental in, in highlighting uh, also the humanity um, and uh, these human concerns that these figures um, are really in paradox with. Mm -hmm. um, do you, um, is it purely paint? Do you use um, a different medium um, or, or all these yes. literally with paintbrushes? Yeah, mostly paint. Um, sometimes there's a mixed media, but mostly all enamels and, um, you know, all sticks sometimes, but generally around all base paints. Yeah, it, but let's put up another one. I, I'm going to tell you something. Here's here, another one. Again, let's talk about power, control. Um, people ask me um, all the time, how do you get ideas, let's say, for shows that we do? And I say, I open up my window and I look outside. And yeah. then I find ways to represent whatever that is, whether it's reading the news or learning about, about people. I get the sense that your work is done, is created and inspired in a similar way watch tv you watch the news you see what's going on down your block right uh, okay. absolutely get that absolutely right? yeah I, I would consider my work as contemporary in, in nature simply because um most of the topics and subject matters are drawn out of you know current events uh current events or current things that um that have to do with uh, again humanity and how things are in what direction things are going and so forth so uh, yeah i draw them directly from whether it's from news or from actual happenings or from personal experience. How, how prolific are you? Do you, do you do something? Do you work every day? Do you, and, yeah. and do, do, are these, do you, do you finish them? You just dash them off or do you take a lot of time with them? Well, I, I work every day. I'm a professional painter for 30 Let, years. Let's now. put up the last one and then we're going to talk about an upcoming show so everybody can see it. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm a professional painter for 30 years now. Uh, I've raised a family of four with it and, you know, I've been uh, obviously very successful in the last, um, I would say maybe, uh, you know, 10 years or so. So, um, I've just been very fortunate. Uh, it's been a lot of work as an artist, as a painter. It's a very difficult field. But I think, you know, I've always believed if you have a passion for something that uh, also has a purpose, 
of some sort, um, you can go pretty far with it. And I've had a, I have, had a, I've had a great team and, and, and uh, great people behind me. Uh, coming up uh, September 10th through 12th is a, um, a show, a, a new exhibit. Uh, why don't you uh, tell us all about it? Let's get Bronx people to it. It's yeah, not I'm really very Bronx. excited. I'm very excited. First of all, I'm excited because, uh, like I said, it's, 20, it's our 20th uh, anniversary between Richard Beaver's Gallery in Brooklyn uh, and myself. Uh, Richard Beaver's Gallery in Brooklyn is also representing me at booth T2, which is Tango 2. So if you get to come out, uh, it's at the uh, futurefairs.com. Uh, and this is a fairly new art fair here in New York City. Um, it, but it's um, you know, making a lot of waves. It's, uh, you'll see written about it. I think the New York Times had a piece mentioned something just the other day. Uh, we're really excited. We're going to have six large pieces. And um, yeah, futurefairs.com. Love for everybody to come out. Right. Uh, but by the way, how large are, in general are the pieces that we just looked at? You know, in uh, real the, life? the ones you looked on at the screen, are probably, they're this big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're around, um, I would say around five to six feet. And the very largest wow. one is uh, more like nine feet. Wow. So these are large paintings. You know, I, I um, obviously interview Bronx people every week. And the words that I hear from you, um, uh, uh, are, are this is this this is what the Bronx is about people with passion people with anger people yeah. feeling powerless trying to uh, fight back um just let's uh, how do we find you on the web uh, let's talk about your social media and um and and uh, then we'll thank you for really uh, for your passion and your work oh oh thank you Gary. it's really yeah it's my pleasure thanks for having me um you can find me on marcusjansen.com that's m a a r c u s j a n s e n.com um, and my social media on IG is uh, also Marcus, two under slashes, Jansen.com. And uh, come see me and follow what we're doing. We're doing you know, a lot of things. We have another opening in Paris, opening up with uh, Alman Rich, also at the same time in Paris. So wow. um, there's, a, there's a lot going on. You, you are expressing, um, when you go across the world, in my mind, you're expressing who we are in the Bronx. And, and I, I couldn't uh, appreciate it more. And uh, again, your passion comes shining through. Uh, Marcus Jansen, a pleasure to meet you, a pleasure to Thank look you. at your artwork. We're now going to follow you all the time. <laughs> and uh, certainly you, if you have a new show, or you have other stuff you want to uh, uh, present to the people of the Bronx. We're not going anywhere. We'd love to have you. Sounds back. good. Great. My all right, pleasure. Thank you. Marcus Jansen, um, a, a, a wonderful uh, Bronx artist. Um, that studio is right there in the South Bronx. And um, so we thank him for his time. Also, thanks to our buddy Griffin Kelly talking about uh, e-scooters in the Bronx. And uh, you know what's going to happen? We'll be back next week with more. Good night.